politic. And I think that the U US did not want... ...possible not to be angry, really properly angry, about abuse of process. We yet again saw the prosecution put to a witness unconnected with the event the lies told by Luke Harding about what Julian said in the El Moro restaurant when the prosecution had refused to allow and the judge had refused to allow John Gertz, who was actually one of the four people present, who was an eyewitness, they refused to allow him to testify that those are lies and it did not happen. And yet every witness that comes along, they're putting to them the lie to get it again and again into the record that Julian said that informants deserved to be killed. Um, so that, that, that's really starting to annoy me now that they refused to let the eyewitness give evidence, but they keep putting the lie deliberately uh, into the record. And then we saw uh, Khaled El Masri, a victim of terrible torture and extraordinary rendition, found by the European Court of Human Rights to be a victim of terrible torture and of extraordinary rendition was not permitted to give his evidence. First of all, his video link mysteriously did not work when it had been working previously at the key moment. Mysteriously, he couldn't be got on video. And then the judge, after an objection by the prosecution, ruled he should not give evidence because she did not have to see his evidence because she could consider the WikiLeaks cable and the American government said it objected to him giving evidence, making allegations of torture against the American government. And this is a man who the European Court of Human Rights has found in its highest chamber to be an extraordinary rendition victim. And he was not allowed in the court today to testify that he was tortured and to testify that WikiLeaks has helped him in his quest for justice. What we are seeing here is a cynical exercise by the judge and the United States government acting in cahoots to use this trial to prevent information from coming out. This trial is not about finding the truth. This trial is about suppressing the truth. It's a disgrace. Yeah. Judge Beretza is a disgrace and I am absolutely bloody sick of it. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. This is Radio Free Assange. I'm quite proud of that. That's a, we, ha we have built a, um, a really grand uh, project, in some ways um, a grand dream, to create a rebel library of Alexandria. This is Radio Free Assange.
This is Radio Free Assange. Free Julian Assange. No extradition. This is Radio Free Assange. Journalism is not a crime. Free Julian Assange. No extradition. You are listening to Free Julian Assange. Good morning. Well, uh, the most dramatic part of this morning um, was where um, the United States attempted to prevent, actually, in the end, did prevent um, uh, Khalid al Mousri from speaking in court. He's a proven victim of a CIA rendition and torture. And it seems that, to me that w what the American prosecution want to do in this case is they want to drag into court all the supposed accusations that they have that damage was done by WikiLeaks, but they want to suppress from coming into court, at least in this case, one absolutely clear case in which the world knows about something that it would never have known about if it weren't for the participation of WikiLeaks in breaking that, uh, in breaking that story. So it wants to, to, to magnify invented bad and suppress recorded good. In this, uh, in this case. And I'm not surprised that Julian stood up in court and said, I I'm not prepared to have a torture victim's evidence suppressed in this court. And he made that point very powerfully, directly uh, to the judge. Now, he isn't supposed to do that, of course, but personally, I'm very glad that he does. I think he was absolutely right uh, to do so. If you're not going to stand up to ensure that people who've been tortured for months on end, for five months, can't have their voice heard in the court, well then you're not going to stand up for very much. Thank you very much, John. This is Radio Free Assange. I'm quite proud of that. That's a, we, we have built a, um, a really grand uh, project, in some ways, um, a grand dream to create a rebel library of Alexandria. Hands up, sir! This is Radio Free Assange. Well, what happened uh, just before this uh, lunch break was a, a, a dramatic event. Uh, we were supposed to hear from Al Masri, the uh, torture victim uh, who was renditioned and tortured for a month by the CIA uh, and his plight for justice. Uh, he was going to testify to the fact that uh, the WikiLeaks revelations helped expose the pressure that the Americans put on Germany not to pursue his case uh, and with, with very blatant threats. It was obvious that the uh, opposition, the, uh, the, the prosecution, the American representatives in the courtroom had no desire to hear his testimony. They had objected to, to the testimony being uh, read out, the full, his full testimony into court. They wanted to redact the test, his testimony. Uh, and uh, the reply to that was to get him basically online, uh, basically on a video uh, uh, connection and testify in court. Uh, when there was a problem arising with the, the technical uh, uh, issue this morning, uh, the, uh, the judge was very quick to, uh, to try to go back to actually reading out the, uh, the testimony instead of hearing the witness to have him in court and basically, in some sense, for the first time in person, being able to, uh, to meet the representatives of the government who was responsible for his plight, for his torture. Uh, Mr. Lewis immediately agreed to that, being read out, and, but he started out wanting that to be a summary. And of course, they wanted to go through the testimony and redact whatever reference was made 
to his torture, to the, his rendition, and to the, the, the essence of what happened to him. And at that moment, uh, uh, Julian Assange uh, uh, rose in, 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 in the dock and, and, and basically called out, I will, I will not have censorship of a, a torture victim in this court. Uh, there was a pause, and in the end, uh, Mark Summers, Julian's lawyers, was able to read out uh, the essence of, uh, uh, of, of uh, El Masri's testimony, which is extremely important in the entire context of the WikiLeaks revelations. And uh, I think that should indicate uh, all the effort that has been put by the opposition, by uh, the U.S. lawyers, aided somewhat by uh, Barrett's uh, decisions uh, to have this quashed. It should amplify the importance. I think people should revisit that story and, uh, and, uh, and look at the story in the context of, uh, of this trial here. And because in essence, it tells a story about what the Wikileaks revelations were all about. It was about justice justice for victims. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Oh, bravo. 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 This is Radio Free Assange. I'm quite proud of that. That's a, we, ha we have built a, um, a really grand uh, project, in some ways um, a grand dream to create a rebel library of Alexandria. This is Radio Free Assange. Robinson's yeah, the testimony of Jennifer Robinson, the Julian's lawyers, was uh, read uh, into the court records uh, this morning as well. Uh, a very important information was uh, was revealed in her testimony, and uh, goes to the story of the political nature of what is uh, going on here. Uh, she told the story about uh, the visit by Dana Rosebacher, who is a former congressman from the U.S., who visited uh, Julian Assange in 2017, uh, and basically expressed that he was visiting Julian with the knowledge and approval of uh, President Donald Trump. What uh, Jennifer Robinson testified to was the fact that uh, the congressman put on the table which uh, he described as a win-win situation. It was an offer of uh, a, a pardon by, uh, by Donald Trump in exchange for uh, Julian Assange uh, uh, revealing the source of the DNC leak. Uh, of course, Julian Assange did not uh, uh, agree to any such proposal. Uh, as, a, as any journalist, he would not reveal uh, any, any, any his sources, as no journalist does. But this offer goes to show the political nature of, uh, of uh, the entire story. And actually, after that, uh, that, uh, that offer was made and turned down, we saw, of course, stepping up in the effort by the, uh, the Trump administration uh, to go after Julian. Uh, which has resulted, of course, with us being in this courtroom uh, where Julian is, is fighting against the extradition. Thank you very much. This is Radio Free Assange. I'm quite proud of that. That's a, we, ha we have built a, um, a really grand uh, project in some ways. Um, a grand dream to create a rebel library of Alexandria. Hands up, this is Radio Free Assange. Free Julian 
This is Radio Free Assange. Free Julian Assange! No extradition! This is Radio Free Assange. Journalism is not a crime. Free Julian Assange. No extradition! You are listening to Free Julian Assange! Radio. The best news of all is that courage is contagious. We have this myth sometimes, this myth that the future is something that is fixed, static, out there, waiting to happen to us. But the future doesn't happen to us. It's not fixed. It's not out there. The future